Hello, how's it going? In today's video, I'm covering Alliance of Lordaeron and Order of the Silver Hand from Chronicle Volume 2. So let's go! In Lordaeron, the Council of Seven Nations were still desperately trying to convince each other that they should join forces. But King Greymane and King Perinod were still being stubborn jerks about it. Gnome and Dwarf refugees had arrived and informed the humans of a sad new development. The Orcs had conquered Kazmadan. This was troubling. The Gnomes and Dwarves were little, but they were also mighty. Super formidable. How the bloody hell had the Orcs taken their territories? And how'd they do it so bloody quickly? This also made it pretty obvious that the Horde was headed north. Surely this would change Gilneas and Ultrak's mind. Nah. Greymane and Perinold still didn't give a shit. The fact was, by unifying, they feared they'd lose some of their regional power. Sovereignty and all that bollocks. Arguments grew so heated that Gilnanus and Ultracrack threatened to abandon the council altogether. However, there was someone in attendance that was now getting a bit sick and tired of all this squabbling. One of Lordaeron's most venerated priests, Turalyon. With Stormwind's prince, Varian, by his side, he called on the leaders to shut up at their faces. Why are you arguing about old, meaningless crap? Every kingdom is going to end up like Stormwind, burnt to a crisp, full of orphans, just like Varian. Look at him, crying about being an orphan. You want to end up like that, loser? The Orcs are not merciful people, and yet here we all are, debating whether we want to band together and save Azeroth, or if we just want to throw it all away over pride, politics and power, you bunch of knobs. There was an awkward stunned silence for a bit, but then the room erupted in applause and people going, Way, Turalyon, way. Even Greymane and Perinald were like, he's bloody right, innit? That very day, the human leaders voted unanimously to form the Alliance of Lordaeron. The next decision was, who's going to lead it? However, that didn't take nearly as long, and it was decided that it would be Anduin Lothar. He was from Stormwind, and had no political ties to the Northern Nations. He could command the armies fairly, and be neutral in disputes. Lothar now wielded more power and influence than any human had since the ancient King Thoradin. Which seems like a terrible idea, but Lothar's a good bloke, so it's fine. His first act was to rally the Alliance forces and order them to gather in Hillsbrad Foothills, just north of the wetlands. Meanwhile, as the forces amassed, Lothar made other preparations. There were still rivalries between some of the Alliance nations, different cultures and ways of doing stuff. Lothar was going to need something to bind them as one. Champions that every human could get behind, no matter where they came from. Clerics would have been an obvious choice, but they hadn't had the best of times during the First War. They'd had the worst of times. He'd rather they use their holy light to mend the wounded off the battlefield. He needed something else. At this point, Archbishop Alonzus Fau from the Church of the Holy Light appeared and was like, Supra. He'd heard of what had transpired in Stormwind and how the clerics had fared. They'd had the worst of times. And he had an idea. How about we forge a new order? They could represent the best qualities of humanity. They'd wield the light, but also have the training of a soldier. And Lothar was like, that's bloody brilliant. Let's do that right now. So Alondas got started. He recruited a handful of knights, all showed an aptitude for the holy light and also exemplified the qualities of loyalty, bravery and honor. He called these students paladins and their group was named the Order of the Silver Hand. Members were Turalyon, the priest who had helped forge the alliance like two minutes ago, Sadan Dathrahan, whose name rhymes, Tyrion Fordring and Uther, who were pretty important peeps. Lothar also sent his best bud, Gavinrad the Dyer, to undergo paladin training. Although the city of Stratholm would become their base of operations eventually, Lothar kept the paladins close for the time being. They travelled alongside the main alliance army. They trained day and night and learned how to use the light for a whole bunch of purposes, like heals and DPS and tanking. All of the things. And Alonzus bloody loved the paladins. As far as he was concerned, they were more than just weapons. They were a beacon of light in the darkness. They were all Batman. As training progressed, the Archbishop presented the paladins with a set of enchanted tomes. Librums. Weird word. These were the church's most ancient relics, and each of them represented what Fa'u considered a core trait of the Silver Hand. Retribution. Holiness. Protection. Justice. And compassion. Gotta love those justice and compassion paladins. He gave one to each of the paladins and challenged them to become living embodiments of what their tome represented. Duralian held the Librum of Protection, Uther had Justice, Tyrion had Retribution, Sadan had Holiness, and Gavinrad had Compassion. Lothar often checked in on the Order's progress, and he was pleased with what he saw, especially from Turalyon and Uther. He liked the cut of their jib, so he asked them to be his lieutenants. Alonzus was happy to accommodate this request, but not immediately. They needed a bit more time before they were ready to set foot on the battlefield. And we're leaving it there! In the next Volume 2 video, we're back with Alex Straza and her Red Dragons as they investigate who stole the Demon Soul. As always, thanks very much to those of you who support the channel as patrons. Links in the description if anyone's interested in supporting the channel in that way. If you enjoyed this video, 
like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all there's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!